once somebody discloses a disability and requests an accommodation, then the employer has a commitment to engage in an interactive process and figure out what accommodation is appropriate. I see a therapist once a week and I see a psychiatrist maybe once every month or two. It doesn't stop me from being able to work here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I enjoy working here. Schizophrenia is one of the psychotic disorders and the, the prominent features in schizophrenia, especially paranoid schizophrenia, is the, um, the presence of hallucinations. So for example, a person may perceive auditory hallucinations. They may hear voices or other sounds. They're, they're often voices, but not always. Oh, hey, Hi, Hi, Sarkis. Hi. Scott's job coach, Charlotte, meets with his supervisor. So how's Scott doing? Actually, things are going very, very well. Uh, he just uh, last month got uh, our uh, associate of the month. Great. Yeah. That's so good to hear. Yeah. Any problems? Anything to work on? Yeah. One thing I really uh, like to have him work on, if it's mm -hmm. possible, uh, I really like to have him open up a little bit and uh, communicate with others. And since we are yeah. a team here, it will help him a great deal, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know. She coaches me. She encourages me and motivates me to do better on the job. And if there's some kind of problem I have at work, uh, she'll let me know and uh, tells me what I can work on to make things better at work. If the person is a qualified individual with a disability who can do the essential functions of the job and they need a job coach to help them, I would say yes, an employer is obligated to make that accommodation unless they can come up with something else that would be just as good. Maybe they're willing to assign, maybe they don't want somebody else coming in from the outside. If they're willing to assign a colleague to work with that person to help them get up to speed, I think that would be acceptable. It doesn't have to be the identical request of the disabled party, but it does have to be something that will help them uh, get on equal footing. Her injuries are healing quite well. Yes, doctor, but she still seems to be in a lot of pain. As oh, a registered nurse, Douglas worked for years in the ward of a large pain. medical center. Okay, I will write an order for a morphine drip. Right. I'm diagnosed with PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, some of the underlying diagnoses include depression, anxiety, panic attack, um, hyperstartle response, nightmares. Post-traumatic stress disorder is a disorder that would be under the category of an anxiety disorder. And typically, the person who has post-traumatic stress disorder has had an experience that is severely shocking where they um, felt their life was threatened or the life of somebody that they care about was threatened or they witnessed somebody else's life be threatened. Um, probably the classic example is the war veteran who may have uh, witnessed bombings and, and uh, dismembered bodies or things like that that then stay in their mind as images that come back unbidden. For me, symptoms go back to 1978 when I was in the military. Things always seem to be under control until something stressful starts happening in life or at work. When I get to the point where I start feeling panicky or the anxiety is high and I start having chest pain or, or I feel like the world's going to come to an end or, or I feel like something bad is getting ready to happen, I can decompensate in a matter of minutes and fall apart literally right in front of your eyes. Douglas, you know, We've talked about the fact that you're taking too much time with these calls. I know, and there's something I should probably tell you. I've been diagnosed with PTSD. I can go back and work on the ward. I'm afraid that might be even more of a problem. There's really a safety issue here. Okay, I'm qualified to do administrative work because of my master's degree in nursing. Okay, um, I don't know what positions might be available, but... Um... Let me look into that for you. I think absenteeism and psychiatric disabilities is a, is a complex issue. Uh, it's complex for the individual who wants to get to work um, and be a participant in their job. It's, it's complex for the employer who has basic job requirements that they need. And I think that, that's where it kind of it goes down to is that there are basic job requirements. But there are ways to kind of think outside the box, so to speak. It may be that um, one way to reduce absenteeism is with flexible scheduling. I just wish people would focus on the abilities that people have rather than on the disabilities that people have. Because there's so many people who would fit under the Americans with Disability Act 
that have fantastic abilities. And I'd also like to remind people that any one of us can become disabled at any time. Um, and we really need to be a lot more sensitive to that issue and make sure that we're extending every opportunity to people to create a level playing field so that they can get into the workforce, so they can contribute, and they can really make a difference.